could not be more honored and privileged to uh, have a chance to interview a legend uh, here in Japan, which is Okisan. Uh, for those of you who are maybe international visitors to the conference, uh, I'll take 30 seconds just to share a little bit about him. So he's the chairman of Monix Group. Um, he built it and it's listed on the Tokyo Stock Exchange. He serves on the Tokyo Stock Exchange board. He, in 2018, bought Coindesk crypto assets. He's been an advisor. For Coin check. Coin check, sorry. <laughs> Coin check, yes. Um, advisor to the Prime Minister and also vice chair for Human Rights Watch. So the breadth of topics that uh, Oki can cover are too many. And I'm sure I've easily left out one or two important things uh, on many of his achievements. Oki-san, uh, it's a very important conversation uh, that we are ending today with. It looks like the next decade is belongs to Japan. Uh, looking back to the last three decades, which in some ways argue can, one can argue they were sort of lost. Um, inflation is coming back to Japan after three decades. What does it mean for Japan? Okay, thank you. Uh, first of all, um, welcome to Tokyo, welcome to Japan. You are in the right place on the right time. Uh, you know, the Japanese equity is all time high. Bitcoin is all time high. You know, it's a nice time, nice place. Uh, the, so Japan, um, you know, it used to be uh, very powerful. As you know, it took only 23 years, by the way, after World War II, Japan became a world number two economy. You know, from the, this area, this Kanda, you know, central Tokyo, it's completely devastated. And it, was, it took only 23 years for Japan to become from that place to become the world number two economy. Uh, but now, as you said, recently, kind of, it, it, it's been struggling. But now it's, it's, it's coming back. The inflation coming from a twofold, one being obviously, you know, the material price and everything higher. And also, interestingly, in Japan, uh, declining population is a cause of uh, inflation. It used to be people say, you know, a growing population is the cause of inflation. But in Japan, the vice versa. Because of the you know, declining population, we have to pay much to get uh, a workforce uh, so that the wages now uh, started high, uh, you know, uh, going up. The inflation, uh, you know, the for, as regards CAPEX, capital expenditure, last year in Japan, the, the CAPEX growth in Japan was uh, the highest in OECD countries. Okay, it was like a 10 trillion yen, 100 trillion yen. It, it, it's quite big. It's like... Uh, one fifth of uh, the the GDP, because of the inflation, you know. Before the inflation, you know, we were in a deflation. So uh, uh, the, the the company executives, uh, they didn't have to make decisions. They could make decisions tomorrow or next year because you know price never changed. But now you know rates going up, and uh, you know uh, the price is going up, yen weakening. So they have to make a decision today rather than tomorrow. So that, that started happening uh, about uh, one or one and a half years ago. And as I said, the wage is now going up. So Japan's been really lazy, executives are re really lazy because of the deflationary environment. Now they are out of that. So that, that's happening now. That's insightful. I did not realize that uh, definition of why inflation is happening. So thank you for that. Uh, you know, you're uh, serving uh, on the board of Tokyo Stock Exchange. and I, I, I used, used to be to, used to. on the board of TSC, and also I'm now a part of, uh, uh, you know, the committee to reform the, the TSC's rules. Yes, and you've seen from very close and possibly participated in developing some of these, uh, which have led to more uh, corporate governance being injected into companies. They have to declare and open a lot more about their operations, about their governance, about their compliances. Uh, why is that uh, happening now? And are you happy with the pace of progress? And do you expect that it will continue to improve further? I mean, Japan's been uh, promoting corporate governance or fiduciary to those kind of things already like uh, 15, 20 years, right? But nothing really much changed. But now, 
all of a sudden it's changing a lot. Why that? It's because I believe the generation of leaders are getting younger. I started working in 1987. Uh, as you know, the Nikkei uh, Japanese equity peaked at 1989. But in 1987, it's already, as regards the society or economy, it's beyond the peak. So since I started working, you know, Japan's been always kind of drifting down. Okay? So I've been always, or my generation, or younger generation, are always, you know, why, why we don't change? Why we, sh we, we don't take all those uh, the best practices from the world, global standard, whatever? But seniors, our seniors, they had a huge success in Showa. As I said, it took only 23 years from devastated to number two in the world. So they had a huge success experience. So that although the, from inside to outside, they were told you have to change, they, they thought they went like, why that? You try to trick me. You, you envy us and you try to trick me. You, you, you try to make us make mistakes. So they didn't want to change. But those, uh, you know, they've been, they're now kind of gone. And then the CEO ship being shifted to my generation or younger. But up until recently, they were still around. Even they passed the CEO ship, they still came to the office as a senior advisor to the same floor as CEO every day <laughs> and they provide the inference. Okay? But the COVID, the pandemic, they put all those people away from the office okay. for two years and they never came back. Because that created a kind of, uh, how do you say, gap, you know, break. And then now, my, it, it's not only in the private sectors. It's in the bureaucracy, it's in TSC, media, all over the place. Now it's run by rather younger generation. Or maybe not Relative. young. <laughs> it's all relativity. <laughs> so, but uh, my generation are younger. So that's... So be, so the, what were written in the corporate governance code in Japan? Five years ago, today, the same, the same. But, but who are running the company, the different, the younger people. And the interesting thing, thing is, this is happening all over the place. So the change happening in Japan, they're doing more best practices and blah, 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 not by given by the government, but by generation uh, younger. And uh, those changes are not led by superstars, but by, you know, everybody. Everybody. So it's not so visual, it's not so vivid, but it's happening all over the place. And also it's not irreversible. So, so that's, so the thing corporate governance seems to be working better in Japan. It's not we injected better corporate governance code, but just the you know, prayers are younger, that's all. That's interesting. We do want to also hear, given that we are talking about the stock market, Japan is often written about as a country which has so much money lying in cash and deposits in banks, 15 trillion. And the new NISA initiative that came out from the government, uh, is that something you expect will drive more allocation out of these cash and deposits? There's inflation uh, towards investments into the market and that should then in turn possibly move the market further up over time, not necessarily uh, you know, in the next three, six months? Of course, NISA, it's a, you know, uh, NISA is a Nippon, Japan Investment Saving Account, yes. NISA. Of course, NISA is uh, it's good, and the new NISA is good, but you know, uh, people buy cars not because there is a good kind of loan package. People buy cars because cars are good. Okay? So people buy stocks, not because of NISA, but because if they believe stocks price going up. Mm. Right? So NISA is good. You know, I, I don't, I, I, I don't, no complaint, it's, it's good for our business. But to think NISA is changing the market is, I think it's a false statement. It, it's not the case. It's not the case, okay? Um, the, the price is going up, share price is going up because expectation to the change of the companies are higher. 
not because okay. of NISA. I think uh, uh, it's kind of ironical way of saying, but uh, we should not be, how do you say, uh, feel too good about NISA. Uh, if we think, or government or whoever think that because of NISA market's changing, it's a big mistake. Okay. Uh, we should forget about NISA. We should just keep working on making the company better and uh, you know, shareholders return better and uh, try to make share prices higher. And then with or without NISA, people just come to buy socks. Again, keeping the same track on you know, investments and cash and stock markets, we are in a fintech conference here where uh, I'm sure there are many entrepreneurs sitting uh, in the audience I was watching one of your talks recently where you said, as an investor, you're very interested in the CEO as opposed to the company and its business. But the first point of decision making when you make investments is the CEO. I'd be very interested in hearing from you, what are your expectations from a CEO of a startup? And what would your advice be that they should consider when they are looking at creating these startups, there's a great amount of policy momentum, new form of capitalism from the Prime Minister's office is talking about 100,000 startups in the next five years, 100 unicorns in the next five or so years. Uh, it would be very valuable to hear your personal views on what are the traits that a startup entrepreneur should have. Well, I have done many investments, of course, into startups. And so far, you know, generally speaking, very good investments. Okay. I would never make any investment into those who are not loyal to shareholders. No way. Whatever the idea is great, however he or she is smart, however the environments are great, it doesn't matter. I mean, that, that, that is today's situation. You know, in the near future, the situation may change dramatically. The question is that, uh, uh, you know, the CEO is really, how do you say, uh, loyal to shareholders, try to even ch pivot, change the, the business, or still try to, you know, uh, get capital back to the shareholders and then try to make returns to shareholders. That commitment is very, commitment to characteristics is very important. It may be characteristics, by the way. Mm. Okay. okay, and uh, I, yeah, so that that is you know when when I when I meet, you know, the startup uh, CEOs come to me and say, you know, please, you know, make investment to my company, you know, it's I, I'm always looking at, I'm always watching, if this guy will, you know, run away or you know try to somehow, you know, get returned. To me, that's it. More than, more than, way more than the ideas or, you know, environments. Um, from a policy momentum point of view, which is wanting to bring entrepreneurship back, there has been, in Japan, low tolerance for failure. And innovation cannot happen without being ready for failure. Uh, are you optimistic about the plans that uh, the policy is looking to drive for startups to say, we want to have 100,000 startups in the next five, six years? Do you think that's an achievable ambition? Uh, and, and what needs to be done to achieve it? It's an interesting question because uh, uh, <laughs> I, I never read or looked into details of what the government is talking about, about supporting startups. Because fundamentally, I completely doubt that uh, you know, government can help the innovation of startups. Uh, you know, it's, uh, we, there need to be a fair competition. Um, and from that, you know, ideas or innovation or growth will come. If the, so, so, so the investors' role are very important. You know, we give you money, so 
I will check you, what you are doing, what you are doing. I try to help you. I try to criticize, criticize you. I, you know, do many things because it's my money, and I like to, you know, save it and grow it. The the government tend to be the most, uh, how do you say, least sensitive to risk of money, because it's not, it, it's a tax. Okay, so, so. They tend to have, a, how do you say, it, a lowest, you know, return target, right? And you know, if the the teacher or parents don't care about your grade in in the schools, you know, you never grow, right? So I think the the right pressure is very important. So I am sorry, but uh, I have not read any details of what they are trying to do. Because I completely doubt, I completely doubt it, it will work. I think what needs for, uh, what is needed for the, you know, um, what is needed for, uh, for Japan is, you know, there are still kind of, uh, how do you say, kind of bad habit in Japan when nail gets out, you know, hamite, right? We do need to see more success examples. Okay, we need to more praise the positive deviant, positive deviant, and then with that, you know, other people try to try to follow that. So that is so. Try to put up the, the good ones are important. Japan tend to be the other way around. They try to, you know, f bring liquidity. But someone make a big, big success, you know, don't, you know, try to, not, not, not so good. For, for example, you know, you know, in the States, I'm on the board of a MasterCard as well. In the States, if there's a great startup and then create a great service or technology, and then big company acquire them, the company, and then make that CEO as the head of the new department or something, new division or the big company. That, has it ever happened in Japan? No. No. So they try to say, big companies or in the government try to say, you know, we will nurture you, we will grow you. But they are not thinking to take them um, to, how do you say, take over the, you know, uh, big big size, you know, kind of, uh, you, know, you know, senior position. I think that need to be changed. You know, if it's a government or big company, if, if it's a great, great startup, big company should say, okay, now you run this uh, one third of the, the company, you run this company. The government, if there is someone good in the, the private sector, you know, wave them in and then let the, you know, him or her run the ministry, for example. Okay, that kind of thing should happen in Japan, I think. Interesting. That's a very uh, bold uh, comment that, uh, and, and you're quite known for speaking your mind. Uh, I do want to talk, touch upon one other uh, aspect before we open it to the audiences, which is uh, the importance of and the growth of women uh, in, in leadership roles uh, in corporates uh, in, in Japan. Uh, in the past, it's not been something which Japan has been known for. Uh, there are some very early signs of some large corporations getting, including your own company, where there are women leaders. Is that something that you expect as a trend that will continue to get better? Uh, and is it helpful uh, for Japan to go down that path? I think it's happening and it, it should go, you know, that way more and more. But I do not want companies to uh, use the, the women thing as an excuse of that they don't give power to young people. <laughs> I think the biggest discrimination in Japan, Japanese the, the system, is not the Male sexual discrimination, but the, you know, age discrimination, okay? It's uh, Japanese companies, um, 
stopped talking about uh, which university the new employees are from. They stopped talking about that like uh, several decades ago. But they're still, they're still precisely counting. You are, you are the cohort uh, joined the company in 2010 or 2015, or that stuff. It, it's, it, so there is a still you know, very rigid you know, age uh, uh, seniority system especially in the central government. And because of that, because of you know, central government, there is a cr very rigid you know, the, the, uh, seniority system. Because of that, corresponding to that, private sector companies would have some reasons to have a you know, seniority system. Because the friends becomes uh, 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 you know, senior in the central government, so it's, it's there is a meaning for the private sector to have a you know, seniority system. So what needs to change for this to change, this uh, seniority versus meritocracy or seniority versus younger? Uh, what needs to change in either government? Uh, are the, are, should this be regulation driven or is this is cultural and it's going to take 10, 15, 20 years to change? Well, I, you know what, even in Japan, uh, if you look at all baseball team or soccer team, or whatever, they are not using a seniority system, age <laughs> seniority system. Merit based. Okay, you know? So you know, it's it should be. Well, you know, I don't know. Let's see. Let's see. As I said, you know, the when after World War Two, when Japan was really growing, age seniority system or that kind of thing actually worked because you know. Entire country was growing, okay, uh, but now it's totally different. Uh, so with that, uh, your younger generation has got completely different views. Try to uh, take the best practices and such and such. So let's see. I hope they realize that uh, you know what, using uh, uh, age seniority system would never make my company win again.